Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. Today I am here to set up my July budget. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these, but I'm hoping that I can get back into the rhythm of them. Um, so I am using my 2024 Humble Beginnings budget planner. And the last video, oops, I have some stuff coming out. The last video that you guys probably have seen was me revealing the 2025 version of this planner. So this is my planner. Um, it came out last April and the new 2025 version just got released for pre-order. So I'm going to share that with you guys really quick before we get into this video, just so that everyone's aware the pre-order, um, is one of those things where we have to hit a, um, break even point in order to order them. So I'm really trying to encourage people to pick them up. I really want this budget planner to be reality and that's sales and pre-orders the only way that can make that happen so here is the new version it is absolutely gorgeous i'll just kind of show you one of my favorite pages i love february i think it's so adorable um, in the new planner it's a little different we have colors within as well as paychecks one through four so if you are a paycheck budgeter this is going to be great for you um, there are also other pre-orders along with the planner. You can pre-order the um, clip and bookmark. This bookmark will be lighter in color when it's actually produced. It's a little bit darker right now, um, but we're working with the manufacturer, so that's something that's fun. We also have a ton of add-ons um, that you can purchase at the same time that you purchase the pre-order for the budget planner so we have expense tracking stickers we have some 2025 extras we have the humble beginnings budget um, washi we have monthly views a bunch of different types of washi and then we have bill due so lots of fun pre-orders available right now i highly recommend picking them up so we can make this budget planner a reality and then if you use the the link that i have down below that's a unique link to my shop you will automatically get this freebie these are the same scripts and colorways as my new 2025 budget planner um, it costs nothing extra for you to use the link it just shows etsy that you're coming because you are watching my content and they give me a little kickback which obviously helps me keep my prices down and all of that fun stuff so definitely 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 make sure to pre-order and make sure to use the link so you can get this this is great if you want to use the 12 boxes and break it out by months or if you just need an extra little script for something super fun okay so let's go ahead and get into all of the budget stuff for July. So first I'm going to use some stickers to decorate. I have the Humble Beginnings budget washi. Um, and then I also have this deco journaling sheet as well. And I'm not sure, I really like this. And I'm thinking about possibly using it and just kind of cutting it up so I can use it up at the top. So let's just go with that. <laughs> I think it's always fun to use stickers a different way and we're gonna try it out so we'll do that and then we'll do a similar situation on the other side so I know I've been a little MIA when it comes to videos lately we've just been really busy and I feel like this week has actually turned out really well because Macy's activities are all on hold because of 4th of July. So softball's done now and now she's just doing cheer and cheer took a break because of the holiday. So it worked out nicely. So we have that and then I think I'm going to use this really pretty floral washi for this little break here. One thing that's nice about the new planner is the new planner will have more color, so um, I'm excited about that. Also, all of these stickers will that like I have available for pre-order match exactly the same patterns and stuff that are in the planner. So if that's something that's important to you, that's a great thing. Um, the other thing is, I think I, I don't know if I mentioned this already. There's color within, so I feel like it just kind of jazzes it up a little bit more, which is kind of nice. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and get into actually figuring out what we're gonna be budgeting for July. Okay, so we're gonna start with our variable expenses and my budget really does not change very much, so you guys will kind of see that. Um, first, we have electric. And then we have gas, and this is to like heat our home and to cook. We have groceries. and eating out. We have household. We have gas for our cars and like my moped, Jason's motorcycle. We have my allowance. Jason's allowance. sinking funds, and then unbudgeted. I like to put an unbudgeted section in my budget because I feel like sometimes there are times where just something random comes up and it doesn't fit within a budget category or a sinking fund, and so it makes it easiest just to do that. I don't put anything in that budget amount, so that's gonna be zero, but I do like to have a placeholder just in case something happens. I do create a business budget as well, which I don't share here on YouTube, but I do create a budget for my business as well. I think that's super important to do. And um, in my business budget, I do have a miscellaneous category, which will cut, like catch just random stuff that happens. Um, like for example, I have budget categories for ink and printers and obviously um, manufacturing the budget planner. I have sticker paper, ink, that type of stuff. But one thing that I don't have a section for is like if I need new pens, I don't have a section for that. And so that just kind of goes under miscellaneous. But I think it's important to either have an unbudgeted or a miscellaneous category in your budget just for those random things that happen. Personally, like I said, I like to just do zero because I don't really want to have like play room with it. I don't want to put $100 there and then like end up spending it every month. But I do like to have a space because if we do have actual, I want to have that in there. Okay, so for electric, we're going to budget $75. Just for reference, um, I have probably a 1,300 square foot home. We do have a finished basement, so that's not included in that. Um, I guess it's probably more like 24, 2,500 if you include the finished basement. In Illinois, we don't. Um, when you look at like Zillow or whatever, and there's four of us living here. It's me, my husband, Jason, and then our two girls, Macy and Mila. So we have a smaller house um, in the suburbs of Illinois, so not super expensive in terms of like utilities, but I feel like, I feel like it's good to share that because some people have like $300, $400 electric bills, and that's just not gonna ever be the situation for us, which is the nice part of having a smaller house. For gas, we're gonna do $50. Groceries, we have kept our grocery budget at $1,000, but honestly, I don't think we really even get close to that. Um, and then eating out, we do 300. So one thing that I have to say is with groceries and eating out, I do separate them because again, it's another one of those things where I feel like if we had them combined, we may go outrageous with eating out and then have very little for groceries. But I do kind of look at them combined when it comes to like the end of the month because if we're eating at home more, our grocery bill is gonna be higher. If we are eating out more, our grocery bill is gonna be lower. And so I just try and keep it within that 1300. That also includes like extra snacks for like if we have softball stuff going on or cheer and we need to bring snacks. It includes having people over. Right now during the summertime, I feel like we're doing a lot more barbecues. We're having people over to hang out outside. Um, it includes drinks. So when we have people over again and like, you know, kids want juice, adults want like high noons or soda or water. Um, I feel like it encompasses all of that. And I would say typically we don't get close to 1300, but it just kind of depends on the situations. Um, for household, we're going to do 200. This is for shampoo, conditioner, body wash, deodorant, um, laundry soap, 
any type of cleaner that we have going on within our home, toilet paper, paper towels, all of that fun stuff. Gas for our cars, we're gonna do 200 as well. I don't think we get anywhere close to that. Like, let me look at June and see what we spent. For June, for gas, we spent 150. So I think we're usually pretty good at not spending too much. Um, in terms of allowance, Jason and I both get $200. And this is kind of an interesting thing that I need to work out a little, a little bit better. It may be a better situation to have them as sinking funds because right now I keep track of Jason's um, ongoing balance in like a specific spot because he never spends his entire allowance. Um, I feel like we are pretty disciplined when it comes to our budget and to finances in general. We don't ever buy like expensive things. I feel like if we do, it's because we saved up for them. So Jason has like you know, probably close to $600 saved of his allowance. And I think he wants to get like a really fancy pickleball paddle. Um, my allowance goes out the window within the month. I buy books, I buy like, you know, sticker type of stuff, like just anything that is more something for me and not so much the business. Like if I buy a new planner, sometimes I'll use my allowance. Um, I also, tend to get coffee, which I've been trying to be better about, or like if I wanna go out for lunch just myself. So anyway, that is allowance related. And then for sinking funds, I'm gonna leave that blank for now because I feel like lately with budgeting, we have like our set stuff that we know that we can fund, but then there's the sinking funds, which there's a lot of the sinking funds that are not like super necessary to fund. And so we kind of do that depending on how income is for the month. That is one thing that I did not mention. We do have income section up at the top and I just don't share my income on the internet. So that is something that I'll fill in after the fact, but we will be funding sinking funds depending on what our income is for the month. We do have a rough estimate, but I wanna wait until I have a better idea of what that will be before I go ahead and fill that in. Next, we're gonna move on to fixed expenses. So the first thing that we have is our mortgage. Then we have internet. We do have Hulu Live and that is our cable. We use Netflix. We do have cell phones. life insurance. We do put money into our daughter's 529 plans. We have a ring doorbell, so we pay for that subscription. Mimi is in preschool, so we're paying for that. Um, my laser hair removal. And then I did switch to Pilates. I'm no longer doing Orange Theory, so we do have Pilates as well. So for our mortgage, our mortgage that we're paying is $2,750. This includes principal interest and an additional principal payment. Um, we do like to put extra. We're trying to pay our loan off in half the amount of time, just base every month and then whatever extra we have, um, we will also put that towards the mortgage as well. Um, but paying this amount ensures that we will pay it off in half the amount of time. Internet is $55. Hulu Live is $81.99. Netflix is $15.49. Our cell phones are $80. Life insurance is 40 to 55. We put $400 to the girls 529s. Ring doorbell is 4.99 per month. Mimi's preschool is $1,208 and 7 cents. Laser hair removal is one sorry $312 and 70 cents. And then Pilates is 229. So for fixed expenses, that's a total of 
$179.79. Okay, so that is the basics for our July. So that is the basics when it comes to our July budget. Obviously, depending on how things go, we will be funding sinking funds as well. And then I'm going to use one of these red um, flags and I'm gonna put in extra mortgage payment. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that down here. I'm just going to put that over the actual savings because right now, like I mentioned, it's kind of like, okay, whatever our income is minus our expenses, we'll figure out sinking funds. Anything left over goes towards our extra mortgage payment, even if it's like $50. Because when it comes to interest and paying down your mortgage when you have like a um, longer term or higher interest rate, I feel like everything helps. So that is what we're gonna be doing. Um, again, Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for bearing with me as I've been trying to get back into filming videos. Don't forget to pick up your pre-ordered 2025 budget planner and check out tomorrow's video. I'm going to be doing a setup for my sinking funds. It's not gonna be anything too crazy just because we don't know what we're gonna be funding just yet, but um, I'm gonna set it up with you guys, give you an idea of how I'm still doing that and all of that fun stuff. So thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow for my sinking fund video. Bye, guys.